Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's a great day to be alive in my right mind, and I thank God for it. And also, I have the power because I'm connected to the power source, Jesus. Hello, everyone. We're just glad that we're able to share the word with you today. I, I just thank God. I feel good down in my soul. Though tri trials and tribulations come, I still feel good because I know who my power source is. This reminds me of a story right here. Uh, it's by uh, David A. Hamburg. He purged just as a gardener will prune branches to help a plant flourish. Our Heavenly Father will discipline his children to enable them to be more spiritually fruitful. And I remember back in the, on the farm in Cofield, North Carolina, a little farming community. And I remember we had a uh, like a, a orchard, the grape vines, the apples, the pears. And one thing they had to do, we had to make sure we removed the weeds around the vine and we couldn't trample upon them to make sure they yielded good grapes. We had to remove the weeds so the weeds would not take the strength from the vine, which would produce the food, the uh, fruit. And we had to, you had to make sure that everything is connected because you'll be looking for those delicious grapes. So we must be the same way. Connection, connection, connection. Our Bible decree is, this is my Bible, God's word, and in it is eternal life. Because his word is my guide, I will not add nor take anything from it. And truly, I thank God for that. And for this year, our theme is uh, being anointed, being appointed and, and anointed in 2022. And that is taken from the scripture of 2 Corinthians 121. And we thank God for that. Thank you for joining us. This is our second week and our second Sunday of service. Thank everyone to all of you for being a part of our ministry in 2021. Uh, please continue to pray for us and uh, visit us and that we may do the will of the Lord. And we thank God for that. But also, please join us on Facebook Live and then for our personal ministry, Simple Battles Life Ministries. Uh, we have that also. And you can join us on Simple Balanced Life Ministry on Facebook. But also, I'm asking everyone to subscribe uh, with us, to us, uh, for our YouTube channel. And that is Rock Faith Space, capital I-M-I. -I, and also, uh, simple S-B-L Space Ministries. That's for, our, again, our personal ministry on YouTube. So then you can go to our websites for both. And we truly thank God for that. So uh, we are looking for a banner year in the Lord and coming right along with us. And we thank God for that. So continue to pray for us as you have supported us. And we thank God for it. So now, let's get into the word. That's why we're here today. Father God, in the name of Jesus, as I come before you today, I pray that the message that you have given me will bring glory to you and that it will bless people that they'll be saved, delivered, and set free. We thank you for it. Oh, one more announcement. Right after we I finish, uh, commence this message here, uh, and we will continue on our go to meeting app where other members of the church and visitors are listening in. We will have a virtual wall, first of its kind for us, our first baptism, really, as uh, pastors, but the baptism will be virtual and we will open up and go through the procedure. Of course, the person who will be baptized will then go off the camera and 
and and then I will go through the procedure. Then afterwards, then she will come back on. So uh, continue on or switch over after this message uh, to our go to meeting. I'm, I'm thinking God because we got to think outside the box. Now, let's go to it. Abiding in the vine. Subtitle. We need to stay connected to Jesus. If if ever before, if ever, with everything that's going on worldwide, not only the pandemic, but so much is going on negatively, we need to abide in the vine and we need to stay connected. Don't allow anything, anyone, any entity to separate you from the love of God. Abiding is an adjective, one of a feeling or memory, lasting a long time, enduring, similar words, continuing, persisting, permanent, constant, steadfast. So we need to be steadfast, constant, constant, vigilant, to stay connected to Jesus. The divine is a noun, as I described uh, growing up about the grapevine. It's a climbing or trailing woody stem plant of the great family. So it's a climbing. So we are climbing, as we say, the saw Jacob's ladder. We need to climb every day. And as we climb up, we should be producing fruit. The question is, have you produced any fruit last year and so for so for us also for this year? Are you producing any fruit? A tree is known by the fruit that it bears. So it's very important that we ask ourselves, am I a fruit bearing disciple of Jesus Christ? Points. A. Staying connected to Jesus is our lifeline. I used to, back in the 90s, worked uh, in the environmental field and we were doing some work and, and I was in this particular tank with sulfuric acid, suited down. And this sulfuric acid will, of course, burn your body if it touches it. And if you have a um, uh, breakage in your light line, if you don't get out quick, you will suffocate. And one time I was in it and the line came loose. I'm in sulfuric acid. I'm in this poisonous uh, information. And some of those things I experienced, I will never tell my wife. Back then I didn't. And I'm just letting the cat out the bag now. And I had to literally hold my breath because there was a breakage in the lifeline. We cannot afford to have a breakage in our lifeline with Jesus because our lives depend on that connection. There was a disconnect in that lifeline in my suit. And that was, it was moving. It was challenging. But I do not want to lose the connection of the lifeline between Jesus and myself. B, if we abide in him, then we can ask and receive according to his will. The problem is we don't get the things that he has for us because a lot of times we don't abide. See, we can't bear fruit outside Jesus. Just like a, um, a tree cannot produce good fruit if the branch, the limbs, and you got the branches, you got the stem on the fruit. If there's a disconnect, then it can't bear good fruit. And finally, God is glorified as we abide in Jesus. See, it's all about glorifying, uh, glorifying Jesus, glorifying the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's about all glory going to Him. So let's uh, let's go ahead on and get into the scriptures. If we will turn to John. The 15th chapter, verses 1 through 8, abiding in Jesus. That's uh, John 15, 
1 through 8. And it reads, I am the true vine. Now, Jesus is the true vine. And my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purged it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now, let me say this. Let me stop here. When you're purging uh, a vine fruit, a tree, you want to get rid of the bad. But sometimes you got to remove even some of the good to give the rest of it sunlight, nourishment. So some of the things in our lives that we're doing good, we need to separate from them. Even some of the good things. Seek the Holy Spirit. Because sometimes we can be doing good and it's not what God wants us to do. So it takes away from his glory because he doesn't want you to do that. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you as a branch cannot bear, bear fruit of itself. Except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that, that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, my words and my words abide in you, you can ask me what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein in is my father glorified. And I said about all glorifying God, that ye bear much fruit, so ye shall be my disciples. Are you am I are you a fruit bearing disciple? I don't care what we say. We can say a lot of things. I can say I love my wife and I do going on 43 years, but if I don't short in my love for her, I'm just talking, beating the air. So it's vitally important that we abide in him. And then he will give us those things that we desire according to his will. He'll supply all of our needs to his uh, riches and glory. Also, he said we delight in him. He will give us the desires of our heart because he put that desire in us. John 15 and 10 says, Jesus kept the Father's commandment, so should we. Jesus kept the Father's commandment, so should we. John 15 and 10. And please get your, your pad out, get out your, your electronic pad device, your pen, your pencil, paper, or whatever, and take these uh, notes down. And throughout the week, you can go back on, uh, check this on Facebook, then also on YouTube, because how many times we listen to conversations or we're in school studying and listening, and we don't remember everything. We have to go back, rehearse it. If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my father's commandments, abide in his love. So Jesus said, I kept my father's commandments. So I need you to keep my commandments cause, because the father, my father, myself and the Holy Spirit will connect it. Suppose like us in our families, sometimes we have a disconnection disturbances. So. Now, this is this can't happen, will not happen. Suppose the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit in heaven fussing. No, I want it done this way. No, we need to do it that way. And I thought you said this. No, I didn't say that. Suppose there was an argument in heaven. Oh, my goodness. What do you say? Oh, my GGM or whatever that is. Suppose that happened. We wouldn't have a chance. But they are intertwined. It's like a good soup. You put everything in that soup. I made a soup last week and I put everything in it. And let me tell you, then it blended together. So the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are one. So we need to abide in him. As Jesus is abiding in the Father and obeying him, and especially if he was down here on earth, we need to do the same thing. 
It's vitally important that we do that. Okay, now let's get to this. Turn to Galatians, the fifth chapter, 22 through 23. Galatians, the fifth chapter, 22 and 23, bearing the fruit of the spirit. Bearing the fruit of the spirit. I said bearing the fruit, excuse me, of the spirit. Okay, now. It says, but the fruit of the spirit is love. Mm. Check your love meter. I had to check mine. When you find yourself getting irritated, find yourself you don't want to share, find yourself you want to be selfish, check it. Joy. How much joy do you have? Do you wait for the music? What's that? Uh, I don't need no music. He's uh, fired by himself. Uh, Paul said, I, I make myself happy. Sometimes you got to get in the, wherever you are and, and just cut a step. Just lift your hands. Just, just when you're in pain, when situations are at you, adverse situation, just, just the joy that's down on the inside. And, and people have kind of questioned or wondered, how can you keep going when you've been hit with so many things? Well, let me tell you this, and I've got a road to uh, travel. It took trials and tribulations. It took a whole lot for me to get to where I am now. Back in the day, early days, I've been here 43 years, will be 43 this, years this year. And seeing that saved, love the Lord, but the trials hit me, I buckle over, like physically buckle over. It's like, oh my God. And then I, it's through trials and tribulations, mistakes and successes, but I had to learn that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Then you got to have peace in the midst of chaos, pandemonium. You got to have the peace of God. That's why it's so important that we read the word of God, that we fast and pray, that we study the word of God, that we, we, we stay connected to the vine, which is Jesus. Because let me tell you, in 2008, when I had that great fall, then our daughter, uh, Danielle was shot and left for dead. All this happened in two and a half weeks apart. If we were not connected to the Lord, we would have gone postal. And thank God, I, I said last week about our daughter, Danielle, and she had her uh, leg amputated because she was basically dragging that leg uh, for 13 years. And a person, talk, we had talked to a person, and she said, I called, this before the operation, I called Danielle to encourage her. And Danielle, she said, Danielle, encourage me. And that if it was her, she'll be curled up in the bed. I mean, uh, that it's because the joy of the Lord in her life, because she had a peace, because she had been long suffering. Approximately, probably 25 operations prior to the one on last week. So she was suffering long. Then we have to have gentleness. See, gentleness is that uh, I'm smiling because uh, Pastor Jay constantly tells me, Gula, you need to be gentle. See, I'm so used to living on the farm of throwing stuff. Uh, don't mean in a harm, but I just throw stuff. Like people place things, I throw things. She said, Gula, be gentle. And our youngest grandson, Austin, which we call Little Gooley, oh my goodness. He does the very same thing. And I just drop my head like, oh my goodness. But I'm learning more and more to be gentle. Goodness, do good to people. Faith, have the faith. As I said last week, we're going to pray and, and, and not doubt. Or doubt and not pray. We can't mix oil and water together. So we need to have faith. Meekness. It means humble. 
humble is not weakness, it's strength. Because you have the power to destroy, power to get back at people, power to do those things, but you lower yourself. Temperance. Mean to be balanced. Don't overeat. Don't over exercise because you can actually break your break your body down. Don't overdo things. And such there and such there is no law. So we thank God. So bearing the fruit of the spirit. And we all have different characteristics. We all, we all have different demeanors. But we must place all of those different characteristics and demeanors at the feet of Jesus. We must humble ourselves so God can get the glory. It's all about God getting the glory. That's what it's all about. And we thank God for that. Then we go to 1 John 2.24, allowing the word to remain in us. Let there therefore abide in you, which we have heard, you have heard from the beginning. The word you are, we are hearing now, the words that we heard, heard when we were children, the words that we hear, let it abide in us. And that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you. Ye shall all, uh, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. So don't let the devil steal your joy. Don't let people, I'm talking about family members. I'm talking about people on your job, in the church, in society as a whole. Don't allow people to steal your joy because if we abide in him, then nobody can sever that relationship. Nobody can steal your joy. We give it up. See, Satan come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. To destroy. And I, I, I allude that to, again, you keep caught, heard me talking about country. That's, that I'm country. But I remember mom and the people back then would make the sausage because we would kill the hogs and they would dress them and take that meat and put sage and other things. And she had this hand crack, uh, crank Sasha's, um, grinder. And they would take this, um, casing and stick it to this thing and they will grind the sausage, put it from the top and it will turn it to mince meat. The devil is intended to grind us, or like hamburger too, grind us to miss me. Then turn around, put us in casing. In other words, enclosure. Like the sausage, they put the sausage in the casing from the contraption. And then at the end, they were tied off. The devil want to, wants to grind us like, as mince meat. Put you in a casing, in a cell, then tie you up so you can't get out. But if you stay connected to the vine, that cannot happen. So let the word abide in you. And also, listen to this, in your families, in your home, don't let your husband, your wife, your children, your grandmama, granddaddy, mother and father, whomever, separate you, put stuff in your head to cast you down, to, to demean you. Don't accept that. Like I, I said last week, Elvis Presley had a song out that, uh, 50 plus years ago, Return to Sender. So when the devil want to throw mess in you or people want to put trash in our ears, return it to the sender. No such place, no known address. So what? No, because you have changed your thinking. You have changed the way you look at life. Stop trying to change everybody else, but change the person in you. Look at the man, the woman, the boy, and the girl, or the girl in the mirror. See, a lot of times we complain about other people. We, we criticize other people. Uh, we do all of that, but what the problem is us. Everywhere you go and you think other people is the problem, are the problems, are the problem. But guess what's the common denominator? It's you. 
But if we stay connected, we have a better chance of overcoming. So we thank God for that. Then if we turn to John, the 14th chapter, verses 15 through 19. And we thank God for that. Um, and now the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, shall abide in us. See, the problem is when we say the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, we think it's always shouting, cutting steps in the church, huckabuck, passing out. So we got the Holy Spirit. Hmm, not always. Holy Spirit will cause you to shut your mouth. Literally, and I have done it, bite my tongue. Because I want to give you a piece of my mind. But I literally had to bite my tongue. I literally had to put my hand over my mouth. Over my mouth. I literally had to drop my head and walk away. Because it wasn't fair. See, the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost will cause you to hold your peace. And let the, let the Lord fight your battle. Now, there are times we must speak up. But I have been in conversations and thank God for my connection and a better connection in the Lord. I've been in conversations with someone and the Holy Spirit said, don't say that. And it wasn't at that time, nothing bad, not fussing. But it wasn't the time to say it or to say it at all. But, but because my connection with the Lord, I didn't say it. But let me tell you, I'm still human. There have been some times. I, unfortunately, I sinned, I repented. I went on and said it and like, oh my goodness, I shouldn't have said that. But as we connect more and more, there will be less of a chance of saying things out of order. So, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's what Jesus is, was saying then and saying now. He said, if you love me, Ghoulie, keep my commandments. Yeah, see, what we need to do is take the word and make it live and make it specific for myself, for yourself. So sometimes what I do, I will put my name in it. Put your name on it. If you love me, Ghoulie, keep my commandments and I will pray the father and he shall give you, Ghoulie, another comforter that he may abide in with you forever even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye ghouly, know him. Ha! I like that. For ye ghouly, know him. For he dwelleth in you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, ghouly. I will not, and he doesn't laugh at my name. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me because I live. Ye shall live also in me, ghouly. See, you got to put your name in there. And this doesn't take it from the way of from the word of God. We got to make it applicable to us individually. So we thank God for that. Abiding in the vine. If you did not produce any or much fruit last year, make sure this year you are doing it. And let me say this. Also in the church, and I've seen it, people will yeah, say, yeah, pastor, I'm with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And if you listen good, and they will say, below, very low. Hmm. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Hmm. I'm not going to do that. But yeah, 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 I'm with you, with you. Lying from the pits of hell. Because then a lot of times, a lot of trouble comes in the church, in the body of Christ, but in the church, because people are not connected. Uh, let me say this. You eat, you eat, and it doesn't extract. You get constipated. The problem is, there's a whole bunch of constipated believers. Say, so what? Yes, you're constipated. Because you get all of that word. We get the word. We get the word. I mean, the word is everywhere. Uh, in the church, then 
uh, virtual and you got your phones and you got your Bibles and people talking to you, talking to people, the word is going in. When are you going to take that word and push it out to minister to someone else? To tell someone else about the law. I was in the store yes um, Friday, I believe. I had church right up in the store, so I had gotten some medicine, and the cashier knows me. And she said, "What is this for?" So I explained it to her, and I said, "Yeah, you know, quickly, this has happened, this has happened." But I said, "God be the glory," and not knowing it was, I knew some people behind me, and one man said, "Amen," another one said, "Yeah." I said, oh, we can have church up in here. And not knowing until we got outside, there was a pastor right behind me. But what I'm saying is, I didn't jump on the uh, conveyor belt the, 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 where the food was going. I didn't jump up there and shout and do a flip like the Blues Brothers. I just simply told her because she inquired, and I gave her a quick synopsis of some things I had gone through, but yet God is able. Man, we had church because I want my light to shine. I want my fruit to be seen. So when we get the chance, share your testimony. If the world can talk and show pornography on the TV and live, but they don't want us to uh, children to pray in school. They don't want to say anything about God. They want to take the gov uh, the government want to take uh, the church away uh, from doing anything. We cannot back down. I preach about that. We cannot stand down. I will not be silent because when I'm connected to the vine and bearing the fruit, I'm gonna testify about the goodness of Jesus. Whether I'm in the grocery line, whether I'm out cutting grass and somebody come by, you know, and I use parables like Jesus did. When people say, oh, all these rocks in your yard, and I like the way you do that. So there's another opportunity. If someone say, and it's happened, man, I like your cowboy hat. I say, I smile. Yeah, yeah I'm just a country boy who loved the Lord. Oh, I like your boots. Oh, yeah. Whether it's hot, 100 degrees or freezing, I got my cowboy hat, boots, leather, and all of that on me. See, because God is good to me. So I'm saying, we've got to be able to show the fruit. And my wife just smiled. I can see her right now smiling because she said she didn't know back in 79 she was going to marry a man like that, a cowboy. But uh, we thank God for it because let me tell you, there are all kinds of people that make this whole thing work. Psalms 91, 1 and 2. God is my refuge. Hmm. Last year, as we're still going through the things that hit this family, looked like we're going to lose my wife. And I was hit with something, the results of it on, uh, even on New Year's Day. But God is my refuge. He that a dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. In the biblical days and in the Western days, if you want to get into the fort and it's 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 uh, fortified, men with the guns and all of that. Even the biblical biblical day, the stones and the uh, whatever they had, what they would do set fire the gate, set fire to the protection, the fortress. Set fire to it or even surround the fortress where they cut off the water line and the people will starve. They will have to give up. But Jesus is that fortress that cannot be cut off. Think about it. Jesus is that fortress. He's my fortress. He's my high tower. He's my bulwark. He's my everything. And no one can come in 
and sever that. So he is my fortress, he is my refuge, and I can depend on him. Can you depend on the Lord? Can you trust God? Even though you're going through a whirlwind of trials and tribulations, will you still trust him? See, the, the problem is, the challenge is, we are testified by how good God is. Ain't nobody going to turn me around. I'm going all the way. Just like Peter said, I will never deny you. In other words, I'll lay down my life. When the heat was on, when the heat was on, baby, he cursed. Because he didn't yet have the power. He thought he could do it in his power. Because he's the one that was headed for the man's neck, throat, when they came to get Jesus. And missed his throat and cut his ear off. Peter was a warrior. And then God turned the warrior that he was on a natural, made him a warrior for Christ. And he became one of the greatest disciples. So it's very, very important that we just don't talk this thing. We talk too much. The world is looking at us and saying, you're not, not but a bunch of talkers. Where's the fruit? We, we, and here's another thing. A great part of the church now is virtual. I know we still have church. We still believe in God for our place. But because of the pandemic, it's virtual. You know, people still don't want to come to church. All you got to do, you can be in your night robe. Just don't turn the camera on. And have church. Don't be cooking, doing your hair, shaving, doing all these other things and talking on another device to somebody else. That lets me know you're not connected to the vine. Because you're connected to the vine, you would have finished your dinner or breakfast or just do it later and stay laser focused. So you don't even have to get out your bed. And you're too lazy to turn on your device. But I bet you this, you're turning on, look at Facebook, Instagram, your gram, his gram, and my gram. You'll do all of that. Or someone comes, I, I, in the pandemic time, oh, uh, let's go to the grocery store, let's go to the mall. You'll go to the mall, you'll wrap your face up, but you can't even sit down and go to church. That let you know that the line is being severed. May not always be totally severed, but it's um, disconnect. Okay? But God is my refuge. And him, I will trust God. 1 John 4 and 13, he has given us his spirit. Whereby know that ye, that we dwell in him. Whereby know we that we dwell in him. Hereby know that Guli dwell in him. And he in us. And he in Guli. Because he hath given us. He has given Guli of his spirit. I told you put your name in there. He has given us his spirit. That will be the sons and daughters and people of God. Think about that. And lastly, John 8, 31 and 32, knowing the truth will call us to be free. Knowing the truth. And we get to know the truth because we're connected. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believe on him, if ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So, to sum it all up, abide in the vine. Abide in Jesus. Don't allow anyone to separate, not in yourself, separate you from the law of the love of the Lord. Don't allow anything to sever. Your relationship is 
long as we stay connected to Jesus and these frail bodies and lives, as long as we stay connected, then we can bring him glory and honor. As our theme says, appointed and anointed in 2022, I would encourage us, get off our behinds, stop being lazy, stop being, stop complaining, stop blaming your problems on somebody else, because everywhere you go, there's a certain person with you, and that is yourself. So I would pray and encourage us, let this be the year that we really produce fruit. And we can't even produce it of our own, but if we stay connected to the vine, which he is our refuge. And greater works we can do, because Jesus has already gone to the Father on my behalf and sitting on the right hand of the throne, interceding on our behalf. It's a slap in God's face when we become lazy, lethargic, and just don't even want to go to church. And, and I'm not putting everything in the physical church because we got to live the life everywhere we go. But again, turn off your phone, other phone, turn off your oven, don't even turn it on. Uh, get the children to sit down because they need to learn how to sit down and said, this is church time. Please do that. So we thank you. We thank you and we thank you. Today, I will pray if there are anyone out there who is not saved, who uh, want to be saved, who want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, who wants to be refilled, who wants to be a, have a better relationship with the Lord, who want to bear more fruit that God will get the glory. Let's do it. Just don't say words. Just don't say, oh yeah, oh yeah, and walk away. Let's make sure we are stay connected, that God may work through us and in us to bring glory to his name. Then finally, if you want to be a member of Rock Faith International Ministries Incorporated, where we are, by the power of God now, Removing walls of separation is served. We don't care. We're not concerned if you're red, yellow, black, and white. We're all precious in his sight. This church, Rock Faith, is a church that we want all different types of people. That's, that's the way we are. God is not prejudiced. God is not biased. So we cannot afford to do that. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, do this for me, everyone out there. Put your hands across your chest. That's our new thing of doing it. I love you. I mean, I love you. I'm submitting my heart. Father God, in the name of Jesus, as I pray now for those who want to be saved, for those who want to return to you from the backslidden stage, for those who want, are saved but they need the power of the Holy Spirit, for those that God that need a a, a, a greater anointing for those who want a better connection to the vine. We pray now in the mighty name of Jesus. Hear their cry. You won't answer or he said, hear the sinner unless he's praying for repentance. Now hear means that you won't regard. And then Lord, we thank you for those who want to be a part of rock faith. We pray they will contact us, that we can minister to them. In your precious name, we pray. Amen. So we thank you on today. We are so grateful, so delighted. We thank God for all the responses and prayers. And so go ahead on, stay in contact with us. Check us on our two sites of Rock Faith and Simple Balanced Life Ministries. And uh, again, if you want to join us, whether you are here locally or far away, hours away, you can be uh, our partnering members. We thank God for that. Now, that is it until the next time. Remember this. Enjoy every moment of every day intentionally. Thank you.